Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. I skipped through the text and uh, we're back with Bronia or Sama. Last time we uh, fought some dudes, saved a girl and uh, her Lucis, her uh, her dog mother. It's time, I guess, we're gonna find a vampire. You've been traveling through a cave network for a while now. Rigid stone is a welcome respite from the inorganic infrastructure you've been encountering, but it's making an unwelcome respite from friend making. Maybe it was too much to hope for this cavern would be home to a, another potential new buddy. Maybe leaving the big city behind was a horrible mistake. Just maybe, these dark, cold tunnels are completely devoid of- Oh, hang on, there's a bunch of buildings in the distance. Oh, fuck, she needs a voice. Um... Shit. Oh, hello. Thought you were one of my girls, but you don't look like a jade blood. Or anything else, really. How strange. You can make a usual spiel regarding your circumstances. You're lost, lonely, your ribs are still broken, you think? The ribs are fine. You could just use another friend or two. I see. My first responsibility is to my jades and the mother grub. Oh, yeah. Jade bloods have this um, thing where they take care of the animal that oversees troll reproduction. Um, usually, trolls don't like have sex they just fill a pail with their goop their reproductive goop and then those buckets are dumped into the mother grub and then she lays the eggs that become trolls i think i think that's how it goes and that's their job so i can't make any promises of friendship just yet but you do look like you need, you need someone to take care of you if you're here in the brooding caverns we follow a few simple rules don't invite drama from up top down below. Protect the mother grub. We have no hierarchy, but do what I say. Let's do everything we can to keep our current records of dozens of zoo without any jades being cold. You're not sure what half those words mean. I am, but you nod your head. Good, I'll take you to the hive. Follow me. Follow us to the hive, which looks like a school or some kind of dormitory with multiple floors and multiple rooms. Usually more of my jades are around. I suppose that everyone's watching the Imperial drones arrive with the filial pails. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Girls, we have a visitor to our cavern. Do not be alarmed by... One, do not be alarmed by their bizarre appearance. They seem harmless and quite weak. Two, do not give them more injuries than they already have. Our visitor deserves a warm J-blood welcome. She claps her hands. No one else is around, but you stand to attention and give the thumbs up to show that you read it loud and clear. She called you visitor and friend. Not friend, but that's okay. You do whatever you can until you're upgraded from visitor to friend, or at least charity case. <laughs> yeah, look at them. They're in the little recuper coons. Oh, man, am I going to get to learn about baby grubs? I'm super excited about that, actually. You follow her upstairs. She stops at a big room on the second floor. When you step into it, you have to clap a hand over your mouth to keep from gagging at the resulting, revolting sight. There are big baby-sized larva-looking things all over the floor, squirming around and crying and inchworming out of kitty pools of green slime. What the hell? This is our nursery. Most of these wigglers are sick or injured, so we look after them until they're well enough to go out into the caverns and spin their cocoons. Oh, so they actually make a little cocoon. I don't think I knew that. I don't know if that ever came up. She looks shifty all of a sudden, trying to give you side eye like she's sizing you up. You try to look non-threatening and also 100% trustworthy. We keep this nursery on the down, though. It's not against any laws, but it's something of a break with tradition to let to save any of the grubs instead of letting them die. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure why we do it. I guess it feels right to me to take care of them, the same way I take care of my jades. Um, yeah, so the whole culture is currently because of the ruling queen. And in an alternate universe where a different girl is the queen, uh, Alternia, which is called Before Us in that universe, is actually rather nice. It's only fucked up in this one. Nursery, huh? You look around again with this new information. You can sort of see how the Wigglers look like babies. Can't believe that any of these things could grow up into anything that looks like Bronya, but this is an alien planet, so who knows? She takes you over to a shelf that seems to hold medical supplies. You're not sure what can be done for your broken ribs, but maybe she has some kind of alien technology that can help. When she starts going through the cabinet, you don't see anything that looks high-tech like the thing that fixed your arm. Uh, I guess that most of the stuff we have here is for the Wigglers, and I'm not familiar enough with your bizarre anatomy to know if it'll help. But if you're not completely sure how to do something, it's best to try anyway. One, even if you fail, everyone can learn from your mistake. Maybe you won't fail. You never know. You're not so sure about applying this ethos to your broken ribs, but you look so determined, it might be rude to say no. Ah, what the hell. Okay, come here. Lift up your shirt so I can get to your injured bellow sack enclosures. Yes, like that. Turn the part that's all bloody and horrifying toward me. 
It's just something that looks kind of like ointment. It's a shade of bright green similar to the slime beds you see around the nursery and seems to be glowing. It looks like there's nothing wrong about applying it to your skin. Despite your optimism, the second she rubs it on some of your broken skin, you see, you feel a seeing hot pain that feels like you got doused with poison. You flinch back instinctively. Your momentum carries you too far. Uh-oh. And you step back, you trip onto something beneath your feet. You cartwheel your arms, and you know it's no use. You're going down, you're yelling timber. Oh, God. You feel something soft and squishy break your fall, and you hear a terrible squelching noise and some kind of animal squeal. You fall right on one of the wigglers. You roll off it, but there's no use. It's squished flat, and you're covered in olive fluid that you think might be its blood. Oh, God, I killed a baby. You look up to see Bronya's horrified face, and you know there's ho no hope for friendship, and there's vengeful eyes. You might want to run before I throw you out of this window and break the rest of your bones. Alternia's deadliest ass. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, that one was really short. So I'm going to break my rule just because the episode was so tiny. No thanks, I will heal on my own. Oh, well, if you're sure. I'm worried about you, though. It seems like you need help, and I wish I could help you more. If I can't take care of someone, I'm not sure how you can truly ever be friends. Cheer up by finding out that friendship is a two-way street. She doesn't have to concern herself, concern herself with your mutilated frame. How can you help her? Uh, well, sure, there are things around here that I can use some assistance with. However, don't take this the wrong way, but we've only just met. I don't know that I can trust you to be as responsible as I am. It's not easy to be the one in charge. You have to be, one, conscientious, two, considerate, and three, competent at all times. Try to think of times in your life when you've been conscientious, considerate, or competent. You're drawing a bit of a blank, but hey, new planet, new you. You assure her that you have what it takes. I guess if you want to help me prove that you, if you want to prove that you can be responsible, I can let you help me out today. It's a good time to visit the Mother Grub. Careful to step around all the little guys on the floor as you head out of the nursery. It takes you back outside, and the caverns are bigger than you first realized. They're also dark and cold and gloomy, and you can't see anywhere that might lead to the planet's surface. Does she really just live down here all the time? To make conversation during the cold hike in the damp cave, you mentioned that living underground like this seems kind of depressing. You realize that wasn't tactful, but she doesn't get angry at your conversational gambit of insulting her home. Oh no, it's peaceful down here, in comparison to everywhere else. I quite enjoy it. The brooding caverns are a place for life and birth, not death. That's pretty uncommon on Eternia. No kidding. You're not sure what she means by brooding caverns, but I guess that has something to do with the wigglers in her nursery. Before you can ask, you reach the top of a ridge and get to a new, wider view of the cavern. It's enormous, probably the size of a small city. All over the cave floor, you see more wigglers crawling everywhere. Cocoons line the cave walls and the larger stalactites with some young trolls crawling out of them. Walking, flying, and crawling of the wigglers and young trolls are a variety of white monsters, all kinds of shapes and sizes. Oh, the Lucy are just picking them up. They're like, I'm going to raise you. In the center of the cavern, there is... Uh, you don't even know how to describe it. It looks like a huge, many-legged queen bug of some kind with a goat-shaped skull and horns coming out of her head. Her bulbous sphincter ripples as she lays a continuous stream of hundreds of eggs from which you assume the gray wrigglers will hatch. Marching through all this, you see several hulking bipedal creatures carrying two buckets, either two away, two or away from the mother grub. They look armed and move like regimented troops, soldiers of some kind. You are instinctively terrified. This is where the magic happens, and by that I mean the continuation of our species. Jade bloods like myself are entrusted with it, looking after our process, which is a very special job. The Imper one, the Imperial drones carry filial pals of genetic material to the mother grub for her slurry. Two, she lays eggs that hatch new grub broods. Three, after the wigglers emerge from the cocoons, the new trolls will go through the trials, and the ones that make it will be selected by Lucis to help care for them. Four, together the lung trolls and the new slide will go up for the service together, where the trolls will go up or get cold or whatever. As she explains story production to you, one of the Imperial drones of your shop to the left in the process tramples a few wigglers and young trolls. Jeez. Drone continues on, but several of the Lucy cry out, crowding the dead of their crowding around their dead or injured charges. Oh god. One of them, a gigantic beast that resembles a bison, bellows and rears up on its hind legs, hitting one of the other Lucy with its front hoof. Oh jeez, not again. This kind of damage controls a lot of what we have to deal with. When a Lucy goes rogue out of grief or confusion, there's the potential for her to lash out at other Lucy, the wigglers, or the mother grub herself. We Jade Bloods cannot let that happen! She looks so concerned, a marked contrast to how confident she seemed before now. You offer to help out earlier, and it seems like now's your chance. Someone has to stop that Lucis, and it could be you. Bite this monster, save the day, you've got this. The bison Lucis seems to be causing quite a ruckus. Other Lucy have now gotten riled up too, with some of them trying to gather wigglers, and some of them 
and keep them at harm's way, and others just getting hyped to thrash. It seems like it could turn into a monster stampede, and they're close to the mother grub's big, soft, vulnerable abdomen. Not great. Fighting a monster single-handed seems like a daunting first step in friendship, but you did tell her you could be responsible. Square your shoulders and tell her that she has nothing to worry about. You're going to stop that Lucis, calm down on the other Lucis, and protect them with the grub. All without breaking a sweat, and hopefully without breaking any more bones either. Whoa there, I was going to suggest that I go after that while you stay here. You seem kind of weak and fragile, even apart from your injuries, I mean. I don't want you to get hurt worse more, and I'm not sure I trust anyone else other than myself to take the lead on this. It wasn't quite the reaction you are hoping for. Normally, you'd be all about sitting back and letting her protect you because, well, protective and responsible is a good look on her. But desperate times call for desperate measures, and you don't know how else you're going to prove yourself worthy to be your friend. You do your best to protect and project an air of confidence, or at least competence. You assure her that this is no sweat for you. You take down Raging Bison on your home planet all the time. You're known for it, actually. Well, if you say that this isn't your first Ungulate Rope and Gallop expedition, I won't believe you. I'll hang back and let you give it a shot, but if it gets too overwhelming, I'm right here. 1. Caring for the Mother Grub is my responsibility as a Jade Blood. 2. I'd never abandon a friend to deal with a mess on their own, if we end up being friends, that is. Oh, hell yes. Now you have a reason to hope. I like how the Bison is just getting turned back here. <laughs> you approach the rampaging Bison with Bison. Do all Bison have horns like that? Maybe they do. You know Bison expert. But you're pretty sure they don't all have teeth? That nasty. Bison on Earth mostly eat grass, don't they? This guy does not look like a herbivore. At first, you try to calm him down by talking to it, but your soothing words have no effect. In fact, you might have just made it angrier by suggesting that it pause and take some deep breaths, breaths in reaction to its trampled charge. You're not even sure it can understand human speech, come to think of it. You circle around it, wishing you had some kind of lasso or something. Maybe you can hurt away from Mother Grub. You look around to see if any of these Lucy look vaguely like Earth Shepherd dogs, but no dice. You hesitate too long, and the Lucis draws away. It's furious eyes falling on the Mother Grub. Oh, God. It stands its hooves, snorts air out of the nostrils, and screams away that sends a lot more hellish than you imagine normal bison are capable of. It's obviously about to charge, and you only think of one thing to do. In desperation, you leap forward and tackle it football style, doing everything you can with your flimsy human body to drag it onto its side. It half works. You plan to lose this inside of its tracks, but it topples over a nest of wrigglers taking you down on with it. Oh, God. Wrigglers and young trolls go bouncing everywhere, squealing in distress. Their lucid to descend upon you in a rage. Everything is chaos for a while. You're trapped beneath the bison lucis, which is very worrying for all your body parts, and you think that you <laughs> might feel something rupturing inside of you. Something important rupturing. Ugh. On the bright side, this crushing mass is protecting you from all the other pissed off lucid trying to attack you. Just as your whole breathing situation is starting to get dicey, you hear a commotion what sounds like possibly the trouncing of the smaller lucid trying to get to you. The crowd of beasts around you scatters, and you hear her. Oof. I'm having a hard time getting this thing off of you. He's still very angry. He's trying to kick me. Where's a bronze blood when you need one? I think I might have mentioned this, but bronze bloods can actually control uh, animals with their mind. The ones that I know of can. It would make sense as to why the last troll... Oh, fuck. I've already forgotten her name. I mean, there's 36 of these guys, but yeah, that would make sense as to why she's a rancher if she can just control cows. You don't know what that means, but you're very grateful that she's here to help you. Try to communicate this, but it all comes garbled from the blood in your mouth. Maybe don't try to speak, or move, or help. You experience a singing feeling that could be related to your diminishing odds of impressing Bronia and becoming her friend, or it could be the compression of all your internal organs. Either way, it's tough to feel optimistic right now. Before you can give up, to complete despair, you hear other voices. Your view is blocked by the massive bison flash on top of you, but could it be? Are the other people here to save you? Finally, I was wondering where you all gotten off to. Let's work together, girls. One, you two grab his horns keep the head still to keep from biting anyone. The rest of you, come with me around to its backside so we can push it out without getting kicked. You hear some grunting and muttering, and the bison starts making noises that sound more confused and less furious. The pressure and pain on your chest briefly spike in intensity as the thing's weight shift, and then they must succeed in dragging it off because you can suddenly breathe again. Crisis ain't over yet. While you're still testing the use of your lungs and bleeding up at the cavern ceiling, you hear a new cacophony of enraged monster noises. Uh-oh, the other loose eyes are still agitated. Get down here and try to calm them down. Protect the mother grub. You lift yourself to see what's going on, but putting any weight in your arms makes you feel like all your bones got turned to confetti. Painful, painful confetti. Feel strong hands propping you up gently, and now your head's in Bronia's lap. <sighs> yes. Try to focus more on how this is a nice place for your head to be and less on the pain. This is not good. I don't know if my jades can reach the stampedes in time. The mother grub could get injured. Not to mention all these wigglers in danger. Oh, no. Didn't think it could get any worse, but you see now the several of the Imperial drones are about to leave. That had been about to leave, the cavern are turning back, drawn by the noise and chaos. Maybe this can be a good thing? Maybe they can instill some order? Fuck, they're gonna kill everyone. 
She scrambles to her feet in the process, letting your head whack down to the cave floor. Your vision swims, and you make you can make out the drones firing indiscriminately at the Luci, the Grubs and Wigglers, and the Jade Bloods. One laser beam skims the side of Mother Grub's massive midsection, and the scream is so loud the ceiling shakes and a few stalactites shake loose, falling on drones and Luci and Wigglers alike. It's a total catastrophe. A whole rainbow's worth of troll Wiggler and Luci's blood is splattering the cavern walls. Bronya seems paralyzed by the chaos, looking from her jades to the mother grub to the imperial, imperiled Wigglers like she's not her sure how to help first. I can't believe it. This is the worst disaster we've ever had down here. And all because I thought I could sit back and let someone else be responsible for once. If I were a less secure person, I would let this moment plant a seed of self-doubt in my mind about my ability to take care of others and do my job well. Or I could chalk it up to you being really fucking stupid. You shrink under the weight of her glare. She's grinning in the face from how angry she is. Swallow and manage to spit out enough blood to ask a question. Yo is hopeless. Does this mean you can't be friends? Are you serious right now? I do not make friends with anyone who recklessly endangers the trolls and wigglers into my care. You killed them all! Oh no! Oh fuck, I ruined it! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna play uh, a third attempt. I'm gonna take my lump. I'm gonna take the loss. That sucked. I'm, I'm sorry, Bronya. Oh god. <sighs> jeez, oh jeez. Oh boy. Well. That sucked, but I've been Alfred. It's been Hive Swap Friendsim, as you can see on the screen. Um, geez. This one went really poorly, but I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>